Hello, my name is Ross Dunn, and this is my presentation from SES Toronto 2011 called Competitive Analysis of Off-Site Success Factors. Now tell me, have you ever worked anywhere this is familiar? Ah, uh, yes, the blind leading the blind. Unfortunately, it's quite common, especially these days when, um, well, there's frankly, there's so many websites out there and so many businesses that really aren't putting the uh, enough research into how their competitors have already succeeded and they're reinventing the wheel um, and as a result they're kind of stumbling blindly through their marketing well that's where competitor analysis comes in and that's uh, what step forth does that's my web company and uh, uh, we've been doing it for wow coming on 15 years so here's a few of the tips we uh, we have for you to, uh, we're going to share today first a little about me uh, Again, I've been doing this for a long time, since 1997. I love working with small, medium-sized businesses. I'm a, a comment writer for the print magazine Search Marketing Standard and a host of SEO 101 on webmasterradio.fm. What is off-site analysis? On-site is everything that uh, is contributing to your ranking that is on your website. Off-site is often uh, links to a person's website any kind of social media buzz, uh, any kind of, over, well, frankly, anything that's all online, like uh, advertisements, uh, press releases on PR web, anything like that that could be assisting uh, with the ranking of a website, but off-site. Today, uh, the, the, obviously, there's a lot there. I could never cover all that in just uh, a few minutes here, so I'm going to cover backlink analysis. That is all of the links pointing to a given competitor and how they may be helping them with rankings. Okay, well to do this obviously we need to identify some worthy competitors. Each competitor has to rank well for the core phrase. In this case, let's say mountain bike parts. Uh, so we're going to find, uh, so let's say three competitors. Next we want to be sure that, the, that those three competitors aren't just you know, one hit wonders. They don't just have a ranking for that once and they don't really have any other rankings. Uh, so we want to make sure they've got a wide range of top key phrase rankings and long tail rankings. Long tail being um, mountain bike parts with the brand name, you know, something that's a little longer. People are getting more defined when they're doing their search. We also want to be sure that they have a large number of incoming links or backlinks. Uh, if they don't, well, it kind of defeats the purpose here because we want to get a lot of data for you to use to assist you with your link building at the end of this project. Your link analysis toolkit. These are some of the best tools out there, in my opinion. Uh, Majestic SEO is uh, an amazing database of links. That's all it does. It just collects links from around the internet. Uh, they've got billions, and uh, that's for their fresh index, and trillions of links for their uh, uh, historical index. Uh, so in other words, that's all of the links that have been in the last, Lord knows, a few years and that way you can you can actually use that index to determine what links your competitors had and no longer have now. These are all things if you really want to get detailed and find out uh, how a competitor has succeeded that's one way to go. Other great tools, uh, uh, well first of all domain tools, I, should, I shouldn't skip over that, um, is excellent for looking at the ownership records for domains and tracking those to other domains that that particular owner may own. Uh, there's a lot of other things it can do, but that's sort of a, uh, a gloss over. Other great tools, SEMrush. If you want to find out what other rankings a competitor has, this is a very powerful tool. Uh, it will give you a complete listing of their search engine rankings, uh, all the keywords for organic, that's the stuff you don't pay for, and for their paid. SEOmoz uh, is similar to Majestic, at least this particular tool, the Linkscape tool. Um, and what I like about it is sometimes I need to be sure I'm, I'm covering all bases so I get a Linkscape report and a Majestic SEO report and I combine the two to get a, a very thorough backlink result for a competitor. Uh, quick run through Majestic SEO uh, nothing new here uh, I think it's actually closer to $29.99 per month now or $19.99 per month but it's still incredibly inexpensive for what you're getting. Domain tools a few of the tools you can get out of it. Uh, domain monitor so you can monitor um, what, uh, whether or not your domain is expiring and when you want. Uh, 
You can also uh, put on trademark alerts in case someone buys a domain that's similar to your company name. A lot of fabulous stuff. All of these can be found, uh, uh, links to these particular sites can be found on Step 4 site. Uh, the, the link here is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash comp tools, C-O-M-P-T-O-O-L-S. Uh, so bit.ly comp tools, you can see the bottom right there. SEMrush, uh, that's again the keyword tool, fantastic. You get all the uh, databases for, well, for many, many countries around the world. Uh, makes things a little easier if you're doing some international promotion. And 10,000 results, that's a significant amount of keywords that you can get from these, and they're all exportable. SEMoz Pro, uh, we have an account there. Uh, we haven't counted all these, but uh, SEMoz Pro is pretty fantastic. They've got uh, Linkscape, but they also got OpenSite Explorer, which is even more thorough. It just isn't quite as clean as Linkscape, which I like for exporting. Um, 9.2 trillion links. These guys, it's amazing how much data they have. Uh, they also have a ton of other tools and some fantastic writing that you get access to as a member. Now, competitive backlink analysis. Let's go through uh, an actual analysis. We're going to use the three tools, Majestic SEO, Domain Tools, and Excel, and SEO's best friend. I love Excel. So to begin with, we need to pick a phrase. And in this case, we've done a little research. We found out that mountain bike parts is uh, one of the main phrases we would like to rank for. Uh, from that, we need to pick our competitors. Bikeparts.com, JensenUSA.com, and BlueSkyCycling.com are the ones we chose uh, for this analysis. <clears throat> we base that on, of course, checking uh, what other rankings they have. They have a, a, a great number, each of them do, and they're currently ranking for their main phrase. Uh, now I should note I have no connection with these guys at all. Um, I harbor no ill will. This is just uh, some examples I wanted to use for this presentation. So uh, if any of you are listening, I hope you just appreciate some of the exposure and uh, uh, don't hurt me. <laughs> I think it's some good data that you may be able to glean from this anyway. All right, the goal here is to take all the data we can, we're can work we going to compile here and put them all into one file that you can use at the end for your link building. How we're going to do this is we're going to create a Majestic SEO report, merge it into a single Excel sheet, run Click Hunter, which will allow us to find hub sites, merge that data in. Then we're going to use domain tools to identify other competitor-owned sites, followed by in, uh, integrating those competitor-owned sites into the Excel sheet as well. Then we get to mine that data. We start with Majestic SEO. Uh, these, are the, these are the actual uh, items you want to flag when you're setting up a report. You're going to need the paid service uh, the, to, to create an advanced report, and uh, unfortunately, but that, you know, it's, it's worth it and it's very inexpensive. Once you've uh, created the report, you're going to export it. Uh, you're going to export the top backlinks report, and again, make sure that these settings are set up. Include backlinks with flag. And uh, once you've exported that, you're going to want to customize it a bit because when you get it out, it's going to be in CSV format. CSV is very basic. Um, it doesn't have any formatting at all, really. Uh, so you're going to want to format it a bit. This is what I did. And uh, what I also did here is you can notice alt text is in red, uh, images in red, all those red items were actually blank spots before. I put those in there to give some context to why they were blank. Now, you've created three reports one for each of the competitors. So that's first one step, step one, uh, you've done for all three. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you want to review the top 50 links. Now let's jump back here for a second. In Majestic SEO, the reports you get will show you AC rank. AC rank is a, like a page rank of sorts, very basic though, but it's still a handy tool for uh, sorting out the best sites to first read or first uh, research. They're the ones that seem to be passing the best link juice to your competitors. So sort them by AC rank and read the first 50, like go through the first 50. Click on them, check them out. When you do that, take notes. Look f and find out whether or not the links your competitors are getting or have relevant anchor text. Um, and that's uh, relevant page content. Quality of pages are high. Uh, is there a reason for the links they're getting? And um, <clears throat> 
another thing is you want a good spread of links from different types of sites. You don't want all of your links coming from a block, all of them coming from a new site. You know, we don't want all our eggs in one basket. It just doesn't look authentic to Google. Um, and frankly, it isn't authentic. Uh, there's obviously something going on there because if you're a site and you're doing well and people want to link to, you're going to be linked to in other places. So um, take note of links. Are they editorial, blog, blog roll, you name it. You may find that uh, you'll conduct an analysis of your own site and find that there are certain um, areas you're uh, anemic in and you want to focus on them. Well, if you have this kind of a catalog or these notes put together, you can then focus on the ones you need and, uh, and bolster them to create that authenticity. Once you've done this, take all three reports and merge them into a master Excel sheet. Next, in step four here, we get to use Click Hunter to find hub sites. Hub sites are uh, any website that happens to be linking to all three of the competitors. If they are, there's a good chance that these sites have a lot of relevance and are the ones that you should aim for. Uh, we call these link hubs. Now take that data, the links that are hub sites, and import them into your Excel master list. This is how I recommend you do it. Copy and paste them to the very bottom of the source URL column because all you're going to get is links. There's no other information under this AC rank, nothing. It's just the, the actual URLs. Post them at the bottom and then color their background, the entire row, a uh, particular color I use blue, and then use the sort function to sort by URL. And you're going to have them fall into place right next to their close cousins or perhaps other links from their same site. This makes it a little easier when you're doing your, your link building later on because you can then target these and see which pages happen to be providing the most link juice. In this case, this is a 2, this is a 0. Which one are you going to go for first? The 2. You know, whatever it may be. As you do this analysis, you're probably going to be uh, clicking on a few of these links and checking them out. Well, when you do this, keep an eye out for any similar designs and layouts, anything that may uh, indicate that there is a relationship between two sites, um, especially hub sites. It could be that they're owned by the same company, um, uh, perhaps owned by one of the competitors, and it's artificially created. Um, so they're essentially, they've artificially created the link popularity that they're succeeding with, and that's a, a valuable piece of information for you to have. Um, also, another indicator is uh, if they happen to have links site-wide, um, these are, uh, one of these people that are linking to them happens to have a link on every single one of their pages linking to them. Uh, well, that's an indicator that's either a paid link or there's something suspicious going on. Very rarely is it authentic, uh, so keep that in mind. Now we get to some domain, domain tools work. Using reverse IP, that's one of the tools within domain tools, we can find out what other websites may be hosted on their same server. Now a lot of bigger companies have their own server. They don't even have to be that big anymore. They're quite affordable. So um, if you can do a reverse IP check, you'll find out what other sites are hosted. In this case, we found otoponer.com. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but that's what it looks like to me. Now when I looked at this, I thought this is pretty cool. All right, so we found another website. When I looked at that site, I found that it actually had identical content to bikeparts.com. That's uh, that's not good necessarily, uh, because if it is, it, if there is no redirect there, it could be that uh, Otoponer is being treated as a separate website, but there's duplicate content, and that's not good for their their site. So stuff like this can be kind of interesting. So I wanted to find out whether or not there was a redirect. To do that. I used the redirect tool we have on our site called the server header checker tool. And uh, when I did that, I found out that uh, there is a problem here. Otoponer.com has a 200 OK. Uh, that means that uh, when Google goes there, it does not see any kind of redirect. It's, it is a legitimate secondary site, um, but it's full of duplicate content. So that's not helping bikeparts.com. And that's a little nugget that you can go, OK, so they made a mistake here. Uh, I see that uh, you know when you do a little more research, you'll notice that Otoponer is looks like it's being phased out. Uh, it is being phased out slowly, but it's being phased out, so uh, it could just be a glitch at this point. But uh, it's interesting, and this is the kind of data you can get when you're doing this kind of research. We want a little more though. Let's find out if BikePars.com has other ownership uh, owner owns any other domains. Well, to do this, uh, you can go to Domain Tools and conduct a, uh, a who is. When you do that, uh, in this case I found out that they have privacy protection, uh, which just goads me on. I love this stuff. So uh, if they have privacy protection, they're saying to you, okay, we uh, 
don't want you to know who owns this domain. Uh, to me, that's just a red flag. There's something they're hiding. Uh, there's no reason why they should be hiding anything, really. Uh, frankly, there's very little you can hide from it, uh, from people online, at least people who know what to look for. And I'll show you that right now. What you can do is do a who is history for that particular domain. So I did that within Domain Tools. Uh, I'm going to bikeparts.com and to, uh, type that in there, I should say. And uh, I pick the most recent who is that has uh, it, that is not in red, which shows that it's not locked, it's not um, protected anymore, and I can find some information about who owned it then. Uh, chances are, especially in this case, it's 2010, and uh, you know it's not that long ago. It's very likely the same company that owned it, so I can find out who owned it. When I did that, I found out uh, a little information on the company, including the core contact address for that particular company. In this case, contact at bikeparts.com. By clicking on that, you can then find out what other domains have that same contact information. This is awesome because you have now have a thread to pull all this together with. And uh, I'll show you what happens then. By doing this research, we now have a report that we can buy which shows five domains, bikeparts.com, used to um, have the same who is information on. Now what does that mean? It could mean that uh, bikeparts.com has sold those domains. Chances are, however, that they are also protected now and no longer uh, show that information, so or show the who is information. So they are still out there and they could be creating an artificial link network. We have no idea. That's where the chance comes in. I mean, you look below, they don't give you much detail here. Domain, one, two, three, four, five, six, and beginning letter, that's it. Um, but you see some history there. You can see the who is records on the right. There's so, quite a bit of history on some of this. Um, that's a good indicator, especially for number two there. For 196 bucks, it's worth the risk, because the only risk you're gonna have here is that you won't find anything. But if you do find something, $200 is a drop in the pan, it's well worth doing. Let's say we did find some. Now, I totally made this up because I didn't buy that report. Um, let's say caoutdoors.com is a site that bikeparts.com owns. Um, first of all, you would drop in all the, the, the source URLs and, and filter them exactly how you did it with Click Hunter, and then highlight any links that show up below it. Um, I just like to uh, color the text in red or whatever color I used. Uh, red just seems to a fitting color. In step six, we need to draw some conclusions. So you've got this fantastic data stream. What can you get from this? Well, filter from it by AC rank. Again, that's that sort of page rank like thing that Majestic SEO has. And uh, look for, for, for sites that provide a particularly strong anchor text um, and, and happen to have, you know, they, they seem to be providing a lot of link juice. They're not no followed. Um, they're just a, generally a great link. Also find sites that provided mentions. Again, mentions aren't direct links to your site. They're literally someone writing your URL, but not linking to you. Uh, the thing about that, it's, or they mention the, the website name or anything like that. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that in the sense of local SEO. Local SEO uh, involves citations. So if someone has um, uh, a local ranking on Google Places and they want to increase that, mentions actually help. They're kind of a link. Um, for that in that realm of algorithm for Google. So this could be a, a good uh, morsel of information to find. Next, uh, look, for por look for forums that may be providing links. Forums seem to be working quite well lately. Um, again, when you listen to this, it may have changed, but uh, that's what keeps me in business. Um, forums change on a regular basis, whether or not they're providing a lot of benefits. Sometimes they shut down, sometimes they're um, you know, followed the links or anything like that. But occasionally, you find a forum that's providing a ton of value to a particular competitor. And in that case, we want to uh, flag those for link building. Further to that, uh, some of the things you can actually glean from drawing conclusions are uh, that a competitor has a whole lot of backlinks that they own. So they have artificially created their backlink profile. They are trying to inflate their, uh, their stature on Google. In that case, they have a precarious ranking advantage because Google's 
pretty much mandate is to find these people and uh, it's just not a good thing to be in that position uh, that's an old tactic that was even bad then but you still see people uh, prospering it's just really the, their clock is ticking that's going to get caught and that's a good it's some good intel for you don't copy them um, another one uh, could be that uh, the competitor has a ton of .edu links. In that case, uh, this could point to a concerted link building effort. Uh, educational institutions use the .edu. Um, .edu does not always mean that they're good. Uh, some people buy them and or have used them and they don't really have a very good site, so don't get a link from them. That's not any, there's no benefit there. But in general, .edu's are educational sites. So they have a lot of good content, and that's why they're good links to get oftentimes and if they seem to have a lot of them they're doing something right and uh, it could be high quality content it could be um, partnering with the schools to provide uh, grants they could be doing anything to try and get those links and that's stuff that's very valuable info um, next thing uh, could be that they have a lot of no followed links that's a mistake on their part they're putting too much energy and areas where they're not getting any link juice. That's why I like to have that intel shown. And in that case, you want to avoid the tactics they were using. What if you find dirt? What if you find that they are artificially creating their own link profile? That is against Google's uh, Webmaster Guidelines. Um, you could have them you know, penalized for that. However, um, first of all, step forth, we believe we should provide you with that data. Um, perhaps other companies would believe otherwise but I think that you should know it should be up to you whether or not you want to turn in your competitor um, and we will certainly help you know point you in the right direction if you want to do that uh, but we don't make that judgment ourselves. and the reason why is well it's it's an ethical issue um, you may feel that you don't want to uh, <laughs> narc on your competitor or uh, you may find too that it's not a good idea it could be attracting attention to a marketplace where you're not squeaky clean and it, it could reflect upon you to recap, that's the process we've just done. Uh, you know, created the reports, merged them, um, identified some competitor-owned sites. Again, that was just a fake one, but you know, still, you could find that data and could merge them in, and you've mined the data. What are we going to get from this? We're going to avoid making mistakes they did. We're going to start by building links from hub pages. Uh, we're going to go for the, the highest AC rank websites to get links from them. And uh, we're also going to build content or articles that were shown to provide the best link bait. Um, and that's the kind of uh, articles that you've noticed your competitors succeeded well with getting links from. Uh, you're going to find a lot of this unless you're in a really um, interesting industry like Kaze Casinos, where frankly a lot of it's uh, garbage content. Um, you're going to find that really savvy competitors have focused their content to try and get links. Once you've uh, created this uh, intel, you're going to want to start the link building. And uh, I suggest using Raven Internet Marketing Tools. Uh, you can find a link to them on our bit.ly slash comp tools page. Um, in fact, I think there's a trial there for you to use, so give it a try. Um, it's a fantastic piece of uh, software. What I'm showing you here is just the link record uh, uh, portion of that tool. Um, in fact, or I should say system because it's got a number of tools. It's so good that Stepforth focuses uh, all of its competitor, all of its uh, clients within the system. We use uh, uh, the link building tool, the Google Analytics integration, uh, ranking uh, reporting. It's 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 chock full of ideas and, and, and great stuff, and they're always improving it. In any case, the link record is beautiful because you can keep track of all the links you try to obtain, who you try to obtain them from. Uh, when it was done, what anchor text you requested, tons of info. And once you have acquired them, you just you know, check it off saying, yes, this is now active. And the system will keep track of the ones that you have gotten before and let you know when they happen to disappear. Um, this is a great way of keeping track of what is working and what isn't. And you can keep track of the type of site that you got the link from. If it was a blog, if it was a... Um, editorial site, comment, anything like that. Um, so you can you you can see which baskets may be getting a little uh, weak. You know, you may want to get more from blogs. You may want to get more from news sites just to try and keep that authentic fingerprint online. One area that uh, I didn't cover and it would just be massive. <laughs> I said here another 50 minutes. Obviously, I've gone a lot farther than that in this uh, presentation, but 
I didn't have the restraint of a uh, conference uh, behind me. But in any case, social media competitor analysis is a whole nother cup of tea. Uh, I didn't have time to do that, but uh, a couple great tips or tools to use are socialmention.com. I love using that. It's a great glimpse um, of how your competitor is using the social media sphere to uh, market themselves. Clout.com will give you some concept of how well they're doing online, what kind of clout they have. Bitly, uh, just add the uh, the plus sign at the end of any URL you see uh, that a competitor has used a Bitly tag or a Bitly URL for, and uh, you'll see some of the stats, so what they've, how many clicks they've gotten, um, and whatever else you can glean from that may be quite useful. One of the tools that I actually uh, was hoping to to feature a little more on here uh, is temporarily offline. It's something we're actually working on um, closely with the uh, owner of the company because we love it so much. Um, SEOLinkReports.com. It may be online by the time you um, read this or watch this presentation, so I highly recommend checking it out. Um, what it will do is a lot of the sorting we just did, That you know, it takes a bit of time. Well, you can take that information, drop it into SEO link reports. It's going to check all the links to make sure they're active right now, and then it's going to, to throw them into buckets. It's going to tell you how many backlinks there are, how many unique domains are linking in, how many unique IPs, or how many of them are run of site links, how many of them are lost, how many links have been lost, what is the anchor text. It's fabulous. It makes life so much easier. It cuts a lot of time, and uh, we hope to have that up very soon. This is an example of what the report looks like in, in terms of the buckets. Uh, you can pause this if you'd like to look at it further. Uh, it's just a sample report. It's, uh, I actually had to, uh, because it's not working right now, just take an old one I have from some other site and put bikeparts.com on it. <laughs> Finally, uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, it's going to be one of many I'm going to be putting on stepforth.com. Uh, you can also tune in to SEO 101 on webmasterradio.fm every week where I co-host with John Carcutt. Uh, my fellow, my buddy and uh, fellow veteran of SEO, and we answer questions about SEO. We uh, do on-site live reviews. There's a whole lot of stuff we do there. You can also download the past podcasts on iTunes by going to seo101radio.com. Uh, that's just a redirect on stepforth.com that takes you right into iTunes. So that's seo101radio.com. Uh, furthermore, if you'd like any information on the services we offer in competitor analysis, uh, just look at the link below. It's going to show up any second if it hasn't already. And uh, lastly, feel free to contact me. I've got my QR code there. You can take a snapshot of that with your camera and add my contact information in. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. If not, uh, enjoy and good luck with your rankings. <laughs>